<laughs> well, hello there. You look like a pretty cool individual, but you know what would make you a lot cooler? A pair of Vortex Binos. You want a pair? I'll make it easy for you. We'll do a giveaway. If you like, comment, and subscribe on this video and all of our other videos, we're gonna give a pair away. So, all you gotta do is be subscribed, like and comment on the videos, and you're entered to win. We'll be giving away a pair of Vortex binoculars soon, and hopefully, you're the winner. Good luck, guys. What's up, guys? We're back at it again today with a video that is a big deal, especially this year. Uh, costs of food plotting equipment, um, supplies is through the roof. So, let's get into that in a second. Before we do, we're booking clients right now. We're booking visits anywhere from South Dakota all the way out to Ohio, down to Tennessee, and everywhere in between. Um, so if you're looking to improve the food plotting situations, learn more about food plotting, when to plant, where to plant, what to plant, tree stand locations, um, timber stand improvement, how to make money on your property, how to pull deer off your neighbor's property, let's get you on the books before we book up because we will book up. Number two, you wanna save some money on, on optics, um, go to eurooptic.com, euro like European, eurooptic.com, use code WLMSVTX10 at checkout to get some money off of Vortex Optics. And if you want some sweet swag, they just dropped a new line of clothes, um, WLM20 will get you money off at vortexoptics.com. Two different websites there, guys. So don't go to the Vortex Optics website and think you're going to get the, the other discount code to work because you're not. But with that being said, let's get into it. There are ways in which you can save money and there's never been more important than this year when it comes to food plotting in the food plotting situation. So for those of you that haven't bought your stuff yet or are unfamiliar with what's going on right now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but costs are high. Okay. If you're a farmer, uh, you understand this. If you've been planting food plots, you understand this, but just like everything else in our given economic state, prices have gone through the roof. Fertilizer, significantly more expensive than what it's been in the past. The seed has even gone up, and it's had to. Uh, the lime, uh, the fuel in your tractor, the tractor itself, prices have went up on everything. No matter who or what we want to blame, guys, it's just it's not beneficial for anybody. Um, so what do we do to counter those effects and ultimately still get the food plots in that we wanted to plant? Um, and, and still have effective results. So now let's 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 say that maybe you're just the guy who doesn't care about it. Okay, go ahead and and, and just skip it and go all together and and uh, you know just spend the money. But the, even that guy, there's still ways that we can have very successful food plots um, just by following some of these steps. So with that being said, the first thing that I would probably do, or the first thing that I pro would probably do is I probably wouldn't buy less, lesser quality seed. And I know that's not going to save you money, but I got to hit that first before we get into the saving money side of things, guys. Don't get cheap seed. Cheap seed. What does cheap seed mean? It means that your seed's probably full of a bunch of garbage, a bunch of inert matter, um, coatings. And don't get me wrong, coatings are, are useful in, in certain applications, but certain applications are not necessary at all. Um, don't buy cheaper seed that's been sitting on a shelf for five years. Um, the germination rate goes down consistently on a yearly basis. So don't skimp out on the seed. Still go to a quality company with super fresh seed, uh, super pure um, purity rate, germination rate, things like that. So don't don't you know don't 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 skip out on that part. Where we can cut back, or the first thing that we can cut back on is the use of glyphosate or herbicides, selective herbicides, things like that. Um, we can cut back maybe 25 to 50 percent of the of the herbicide that we're using guys um, on our food plots and so yes we might have some more weeds but here's the thing that you need to understand guys weeds aren't always a bad thing there's a lot of weeds like poke weed there's a lot of weeds like ragweed some of these more popular ones that some of you guys know that are super high in protein I don't mind those being in the food plot. In fact, I hope that they're in my food plot because they're a great natural forage that I didn't have to plant that the deer will absolutely eat and find palatable at some point throughout the season. So if we use less glyphosate um, or less herbicide, it's likely that more of those weeds, um, especially broadleafs, will, will end up growing in our food plots and I'm okay with that. Deer feed on those things anyway. It doesn't need to look like something you've seen on the outdoor channel or in other YouTube videos for it to be successful. Sometimes the ugliest food plots are the best. I've even seen guys, and actually I'm not gonna give that away yet. I'm gonna go hopefully get into that a little bit later if I don't forget. Um, 
there's there's one way we can really save money on food plotting this year and i'll get to that in a second but anyway the weeds use less glyphosate get more weeds i'm okay with it um, the nice thing about a lot of these blends that you guys are going to be planting this time of year most likely is that they're super uh, broad leaf blends so what does that mean um, some of these uh, leg legumes these brassicas things like that tend to have a little bit more broader leaf they're not a grass so what that means is they will outcompete some of those those grasses and other forbs and, and, and things like that for sunlight and, and grow up a little bit taller, shade them out and basically just outcompete them. So if there was a blend in which we could get away with using less glyphosate, herbicide and things like that, it's a broadleaf blend because it will hopefully outcompete some of these weeds anyway, um, the less lesser desirable weeds and things like that. So. You know, we can definitely use less glyphosate, which has gone through the roof this year, along with everything else. Use less Roundup, use less selective herbicides, things like that. I'm okay with there being some weeds in your food plot. Number two, let's cut back on fertilizer. Um, it's not the most, if, if you're the guy who's trying to, um, trying to do things the quote unquote right way, the most natural way, you wanna cut back on fertilizer anyway. And once your soil is built, if you have a good crop rotation program where your, 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 your food plots are putting certain things back into the soil during one time of the year and then you plant another thing and you keep, you know, um, keep your soil in good condition, keep good soil structure, you're not planting using the wrong methods, things like that. You're not tilling up your soil 12 inches deep. You're not using a disc, maybe you're no tilling or broadcasting and rolling, doing all these things. Um, those are going to help save, save you money in the long run because you're going to be able to use less fertilizer. So let's think about it this way. If we throw down our recommended dose of, of triple 19, um, and we, we throw that down on our food plot, but we till everything under a, every year, um, you know, 12 inches deep, well, the root base of your food plots is not 12 inches deep in a lot of cases. So therefore you just drained all those, all those usable nutrients into the lower end of the seed bed. So if we use the right planting methods, we can use about 50%, 25 to 50% less fertilizer on a yearly basis. We can cut back because the good thing is, is once your soil structure is built, once the, the soil health is built, if we don't ruin that, if we don't go in there and we break it up and break it apart and lower it into the soil bed even farther than it ever would need to be, then we can use less fertilizer. So I hate to say it, price isn't gonna go down next year either, guys. Not, I mean, not significantly. We're, we're gonna be dealing with some higher prices for a while here. So plan ahead right now. And then we can slowly use less fertilizer on a yearly basis um, and bank on mother nature ultimately fertilizing in the crop rotation, um, you know, the crop rotation plans or food plot rotation plans that we're going to use, putting certain things back into soil to ultimately save you some money. Let the crops do the dirty work and keep your money um, in your pockets where, where they belong. So um, those are some of the main ways that you can really save food money on food plots this year's got this year, guys. Um, costs are high. So if you can if you can save money in any way possible, why wouldn't you? So take those steps, take those precautions, and you're gonna save a little bit of money, not only this year, and maybe not so much this year, but in the future when prices stay high, that's how you're gonna do it, guys. Don't cut the corners in certain places, but in certain places you can. So if you like these tips, you like these videos, you like the content, you like giveaways, like, subscribe, and comment. If you do that, you're always entered in our giveaways, and you're gonna get a notification when we drop some videos. So until then, see you next time.